Well, it came about through this visit by David Goldstein, a former student who is now a professor at Austin, who visited here and I said to him, well, this stuff that you're computing on various moons of Jupiter, maybe it can be studied more simply. So I sat down and tried to do the analysis and I found that the escape velocity of a supersonic gas jet is much smaller than the escape velocity of a solid object. That was very surprising at first, but then I realized that in a supersonic isentropic expansion, frictionless expansion, the thermal energy of the gas as it comes out of the body gets converted to ordered kinetic energy and therefore adds to the speed of the gas. And this means that uh, escape velocity of a gas is very much smaller than that of a solid object. Well, I never thought that I would even see a good example of such an eruption. So after that, I discovered there's, there's this beautiful picture of the moon Io taken from two and a half million kilometers away by the New Horizon mission. And it shows an eruption of the volcano Tvashtar. And this volcano reaches a height of 300 kilometers. And that is something that I can compute to determine the velocity with which it left the surface. And also I can determine the temperature of the place from which the stuff starts. Pretty exciting. A thermometer. Two and a half million kilometers away, I can measure the temperature of this stuff. <laughs> Other people have estimated how fast it would have to leave and they got a value which is about two and a half times higher because they were using the wrong escape velocity. And you can see that in this curve here, this is what they got as the speed as compared with my value here. On Enceladus, the escape velocity of water is actually only 90 meters per second. So it's easy for a gas jet to exceed that. And Enceladus feeds one of the rings of Saturn with ice. All of these are different gases. For example, on uh, the one I saw here on Tvashtar, it is sulfur dioxide. Horrible stuff. <laughs> yeah, these atmospheres are not all that pleasant sometimes. <laughs> Doing all this work, I decided to publish it and I sent it to the Journal of Fluid Mechanics which is a very prestigious journal in our field. So I was probably the oldest single author in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. 